This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Thursday, September the 19th, in the year 2013. Uh, and I'm sitting in the front room of, at 69, um, 6854? That's correct. Uh, West Oakton Court, near to the Niles Public Library. Um, I work at the Niles Public Library. My name is Neil O'Shea, and I'm privileged to be speaking with Mr. Bernard J. Warshaw. Uh, Mr. Warshaw uh, was born on March the 17th. That's correct. St. Patrick's Day. 1925. Uh, and he has kindly consented uh, to be interviewed for this project. Um, I believe Mr. Warsh Warshaw learned about the project through his attendance at our Vis Veterans History Project breakfasts uh, at the library. Yes. Uh, and his wife, uh, uh, Dorothy, often volunteers at, at yes, that sir. event. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Warshaw has been uh, um, kind enough to brief me a little bit on his military career. There's a book here, The History of the 13th Armored Division, the Black Hat Division that was published on its 50th anniversary, and there's a, a helpful uh, map and a history and pictures. And then um, uh, he's also shared with me here the uh, a beautiful bound album that his daughter produced on his service uh, in the United States Army, uh, which is beautiful pictures and even uh, includes uh, uh, details of his honor flight to Washington. So. Ernie Warshaw is a, a local Niles hero, and we're looking forward to interviewing him. Um, Mr. Warshaw, I see you have it here. Do you, re, do you recall when you entered the service? Uh, Let's see, would that have been maybe November of 43? That's correct. November 27, yes, 43. Correct. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, at, uh, during the holidays, Christmas holidays, we were traveling to California, but the uh, uh, car with the food supply uh, was uh, detained and it didn't, it wasn't attached to the train, and we had to settle for a sandwich and an orange or a apple. That was our Christmas dinner. So this was the unfortunately this was the army, the the troop train or, or That's whatever. Correct. Yeah. And you were heading to California. To California. Yeah, to Camp Roberts for our basic training in the field artillery. Field artillery. Now, in uh, were you living in Chicago at that time? That's correct. Do you know what neighborhood or? Uh, yes, uh, 2337 Iowa Street. Uh, that's off of Western and Chicago Avenue. Those are the principal cities. Yeah. I mean streets. And were you in um, were you in high school at that time, or uh, no, graduated uh, from high school? I was already in the twenties. Uh, I uh, worked uh, on the government project, and I was deferred uh, on two occasions for six months each, but. Uh, that meant I worked seven days a week, and uh, for a young man, uh, that, that was getting to be a little rough, and I decided to forget the deferment, and I uh, uh, was drafted. And what, um, do you, what, what high school did you attend? Crane Technical High School. Crane Tech, yeah. Um, and that line of work that you were uh, doing for the government, was that in manufacturing or? Yes, it was. Uh, as a matter of fact, I had an outstanding record uh, uh, at work uh, only because uh, uh, I started to work on uh, Milwaukee profilers and they were producing six units per day. I produced six units per hour. And they called everybody down from the office, and uh, they watched me perform. And of course, the chips were flying all over. You had a unit that was uh, uh, an actual piece, and then you had a forging. And then you cut the 
forging to the shape of the piece. And this was a cocking lever for a naval gun. And uh, Wow. Uh, so then they had four of those machines there, brand new. And, uh, of course, at that time, there wasn't very much to pick from as far as in workers. Because you had the butchery bakers uh, that went to industrial uh, jobs to, to, because they were required to, or otherwise uh, they would be drafted, even though they had families. So uh, uh, I was in charge, and I was instructing them on how to accomplish this. And it was a simple matter of increasing the follower by about 25 thousandths so that you could apply more pressure and as you applied more pressure, it eliminated the vibration reflection on the piece, uh, chatter marks. When you were at Crane, did you take uh, shop courses? Yes, or? I did. I, I did. Uh, at that time, they offered uh, uh, shop courses uh, operating a lathe, a mill, a uh, milling machine. And uh, when I went to work for Triplex, the uh, uh, man who was the foreman at that time, he was Stonewall Jackson. Wow. And he was a rugged individual. And he says, you said you had experience. There's the machine. There are the parts. Run them. He says, but if you bust up those cutters, you're out. <laughs> but uh, I had a little problem, but not much of a problem. Actually, I did the puzzles. And this is just a matter of taking a piece, you know what it looks like, you know, you have the shape in the rough and in the finish, and you put it in a fixture and you lock it, but then turning the machine on, you know, of course you got the usual red and green button, but that just started the cutters rolling. But then in order to move the machine, the bed, into the uh, cutters, uh, there was another lever to push. And when I picked up the lever up and across, the, the, the machine table moved rapidly toward the cutters. And, I, you know, it, it looked like disaster. But it, I stopped. Then I did it again. Stopped. Did it again. And then when I came close to the part, it went into a slow feed. And, of course, after I made the first piece, then I was, you know, King. <laughs> so, so this job was it was it was a good job. You it was wound up in a supervisory capacity, but it, yes, it became a seven day a week job, and you thought uh, it got to be a little rough. Yeah, and they were uh, not that they were demanding, but you know, uh, I got stuck with all the uh, special jobs. There were jobs that were so precise that a machine couldn't make the part to the, the proper dimension. You had to bring it up to a point and then move it by hand, feed it. And uh, it was a matter of thousands. And uh, there were 38 slots on it, and it was a torpedo shaft. And uh, that's what they called it. Uh, its function probably was something else uh, because of the number of uh, slots that were cut into the piece. But if w any one slot was made oversized, the piece was rejected. And the, the, fel the fellows that they had at that time lacked control. You know, they, they'd get in there and they'd try to... A little to, rough and... Yeah, yeah. and uh, it ended up that I worked for 32 hours to turn out the work that they needed on, on that uh, part. Uh, and I'd go and eat. Uh, I, I had pancakes <laughs> repeatedly. Every six hours or so, I'd go over there and eat pancakes. <laughs> the um, but anyway, you you figured you'd you'd rather take your chances uh, in the army on a battlefield than yeah. Well, you know, after a while, it, 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 you know it. Not that it was monotonous, because it was exciting, 
but uh, uh, it was uncomfortable. You know, the guy across the street with two kids, he was drafted, and here I am, a young man, and uh, was going into service. So you could feel that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it was a little insulting because my mother went to a butcher shop, and the woman Comments, was there. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, well, how did your uh, how did your family feel about you going? Yeah. Well, they were all for it. They're all for it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was necessary. So, so you know, yeah. you feel it's necessary. Go ahead. So you didn't mind. Um, so you wound up in the army. You didn't. Mind, was that would that have been your choice of the of branch of service to enter? Uh, no, I prefer to go into the navy because there I would be able to use my skills on machinery, you know, most likely. And uh, in the Army, you know, I just thought I'd get, uh, uh, you know, uh, a rifle and get, uh, that was be it, you know, you march away in the Army. So you, but, so you, you wind up on the train then? Yes. For but Camp Roberts? That was after we took tests. Oh yeah. And when when we took the test to get into the service, uh, I was fortunate enough to realize that you know, uh, if if it's going to be any kind of a test, I got to make it look good. I went and bought a pamphlet for twenty five cents, and I read it, and it had all kinds of shortcuts for math, and uh, this would help me get a better IQ. And, and I, you know, I was just one of the lucky ones. One of 500, because then we ended up in a group of 500, and that's what went over to California to the field artillery uh, basic training instead of Army. So the Army had already decided that you and these other 499 men were going into artillery before you even went to basic training. That's right. Yeah. 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 That was our basic training. And um, was that the first time you'd ever been away from home? or Yes. And you're, yes, that was. And those 499 other people, were they from all different parts of the country? Uh, yes, they were. And uh, there were quite a few lawyers, surprisingly. Lawyers? Lawyers. That must have been quite an education. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Uh, elderly men, mm. you know, in the late 20s, 30s. Uh, it, it was interesting. It, it wasn't a young, rowdy group it, like you would normally expect, you know, mm -hmm. in the service with teenagers or, you know. And so you were, you're, you're out in California then at uh, yes. Christmas time and... Uh, well, I was on a train yeah, <laughs> going to there. California. Yeah. Right. And then um, basic training out there in the field artillery, that's for a couple of months or? Uh, yes, it was, uh, uh, I forget what the normal basic training uh, was, I think 17 weeks uh, for Army, and I don't remember what it was for artillery. But uh, alongside of us, they had... Uh, uh, trainees for officers, but uh, the difference between them and us, they had a double time to lunch, stand at attention, and uh, double time back, and everything was double time. That's faster, right? Oh, yes, you got yeah. to run. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we got away, you know, just leisurely walking. So the fact that you would help to make guns, although that was for the Navy, yeah. did, that, that it still helps you with understanding field artillery and the, and the uh, mechanics? And the, not necessarily, not necessarily. No. no. So then, um, do you get a chance to come home before you go overseas then, or no? No, uh, before that, I uh, uh, went to uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, uh, wire communication school, and uh, it was uh, it started off with uh, uh, Morse code, uh, telephone, 
that wire communications. Uh, uh, the Morse code, the first week it was a snap. Easy, the dots and the dashes, no problem. But in the second week, the speed of it, I couldn't distinguish between a dash and a dot. So then I moved, I wasn't the only one, about half of us were knocked off. And then we went to uh, radio communications and wire communications, semaphore. Uh, we had two weeks of uh, coding and decoding. You had a coding device and uh, you entered uh, a substitute letters for whatever you needed. It gave you uh, a substitute letter and th then you send, send the message. Uh, wire communications, it was everything including climbing poles at night and signing your name on top and then, then coming down, and uh, the poles were badly chewed up from the uh, climbers. Uh, you dug in with your climber and tore into the wood, and then if you hugged the pole, the pole would stretch the hell out of your chest. It would be miserable. But uh, yet the object was to lean back away from and depend on, 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 on the, that's right, exactly, and then move the belt up and then adjust yourself again yeah. up and keep going until you get to the top. Yeah, there's probably a knack in it, you know. Yes. A, you, an you art to it. And then, you you got to be brave. Yeah. Because the other, you know, the idea of coming in close didn't work. Yeah. So even though you were in field artillery, you still had to take this communications. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Communications. Stringing lines on the field or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only that, but the forward observer has, when he spots the target, ah. uh, he calls back now, uh, and gives fire direction so that you can, you know, one the first round to spot it and then you relocated that spot to where the target was and that way you can destroy another the enemy's tanks. And when you're up the pole or whatever, um, you're, well, not, you're not you're, you're just stringing the wire there for the communication. Right, you're you're not doing the, the no, you know, you're no, not no. doing the, the actual observing of the no. You know, yeah. But you know, you could find yourself in that kind of a situation where, you know, a height would give you an advantage. So was there any particularly uh, funny or crazy situations during basic training at Camp Roberts or the no, training at Fort Sill? No, just the idea of going up the tree that was, and, and with a flashlight sign your name yeah. and then come back down yeah. <laughs> at night. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of the Army food? Pretty good? Uh, not bad at all. Not As a matter of fact, I had an unusual situation only because I, uh, we had a second floor and on a, the cadre, which are the personnel that stay there, and they're the instructors. And that could be a corporal, it could be a PFC. And we had a jerk, a jerk. That was standing on the stairs and he was uh, pushing you along, you know. He wanted us to run down the stairs. And he grabbed me and he pulled my arm and I clumsily rolled down the stairs. <laughs> then I came back and I socked him. You don't do that to the cadre. That's a big mortal sin. <laughs> you just don't do that. So I got on record uh, and I had to uh, go to the kitchen almost through my whole basic training as uh, a dishwasher. But the sergeant in the kitchen, he felt sorry for me. He got to be my best buddy. And uh, I come into the kitchen at 4 o'clock in the morning. He said, what do you have? Eggs, uh, ham, chicken, what, whatever you want, I'll make it for you. <laughs> so I would eat like a king. 
And then after that, I, I worked, you know, I got promoted out of the kitchen uh, from dishwashing to uh, serving in the uh, cafeteria, putting, you know, the ketchups and the sugar and milk and ice cream. Uh, I passed it out. So when I pass it out, you know, all the buddies, you know, nudge. They want more milk, or they want this, or they want that. So I got to be well known and a popular guy. <laughs> Did a lot of the, a lot of the other soldiers have trouble with that same guy, that jerk? Yeah, yeah. He he was just pushing everybody, and uh, you know, you could hurt a yeah. person pretty bad. You're on a second floor. There was a flight of stairs, and then there was a landing, and then another flight of stairs. Well, I, I, I got down to the first landing, uh, and then I went back up, and I socked him. <laughs> I wonder why he did it. Huh? I say, I wonder why he did it. He was just, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say he was doing his job because you could do your job just as well. Okay, fellas, come on, hurry up, you know, get yeah. going. Instead of pulling. Yeah. You know, you, you catch a person off balance and on stairs. I oh, didn't like Unless it. he was trying to recruit people for the <laughs> for the dishwashing. It doesn't make sense. Yes, 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 somebody yes. should have, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's what it looked like. Yeah. So were you able to uh, check in with your family while you were at Fort Sill, Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, at this time, you know you're going to be part of the ar the artillery, right? Yeah. And then, you, and then you get your, the unit gets its orders to head overseas? Uh, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I went to this uh, uh, communication school, and uh, when I got back, I... Uh, ran into a problem. I got back early, and they says, well, you're not going to do anything today. You know, it was noon, and they says, well, you can go to town, and uh, uh, there's a dance at the, uh, I forget the, I know it was a red big building. <laughs> uh, there, there was a dance over there, like a USO dance. So he, they says, you know, go. Of course, I'm going, but I'm going with a quart of whiskey. How'd you come by that? I got it uh, uh, from California, oh. knowing that uh, where I'm going is in Dry County. Yeah. And when I go to to the dance over there, you know, I got everybody's a buddy. Everybody's drinking with me. My my booze, you know, everybody's friendly. Uh, well, one thing to led to another, and. The MPs come along, and w I was out after curfew, re resisting arrest. Uh, it was a dry county, and I had booze. You know, whose is it? Well, it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up in a, a stockade, and in the morning, they took me back to the battery commander, and, of course, the battery commander says, uh, what do you want, battery commander's punishment or uh, uh, there's a military, uh, um, what the heck is it, it's a military court. Uh, and then, you know, they sentence you according to the written rules. And, of course, I knew that with the... Uh, Officer, I would get get the easy, you know, get knocked off easy. Uh, I uh, ended up getting up at four o'clock in the morning and picking up cigarette boxes in the area. Uh, but I I was busted. I didn't get the sergeant's rating. Usually after the ten weeks of school, uh, you ended up getting a sergeant's rating tech sergeants, you know, whatever the company needed. But uh, it ended up I uh, was private, first class. <laughs> no, just private. <laughs> I think I had a step to go to get into PFC. <laughs> and, uh, of course, then I'm pulling all kinds of duty. I was pulling guard duty. 
I'm the only one with a carbine that has a ammunition, and we're on a train going to New York, going overseas. Uh, but here again, I'm going as a private. Uh, but that in hindered my record, because once you got overseas, everybody got some kind of a rating. But, you know, I didn't qualify. Bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, interesting file. <laughs> yeah. So, the, um, so was everybody kind of excited then to get the news that, hey, we're, we're shipping Go out over. or going, yeah. going over? Yeah. yeah. So that would have, that was in, um, that was toward the end of 44? Yeah. Do you remember the name of the ship you sailed on? or? Uh? It was one of the generals, and uh, we were in a uh, uh, 54 ship convoy, and we had a German sub that was in uh, our waters, and uh, we dropped depth charges, and when they drop a depth charge, and it exploded, the walls would buckle. It, it sound like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, crimping, you know, steel, crunch, crunch. Uh, it's nervous, you know, you're down below. They put a Marine on each end with a rifle, and if, if a soldier got out of his bed, he could be shot. You lay in your bed, and you were laying maybe five in a row, one on top of each other, and if a guy got sick on top and he puked, tough, tough, you know, it was scary because of the, the noise, and of course, the, the Navy had to move, you know, when they had to go, they were on the run, and you know, they're close quarters, uh, you can understand that we, Nobody could stand around and block the way. Yeah. You lay in your bed, period. So that crossing probably was it five or six days, or do you think? Oh, it was longer. Longer. Because we took the southern route. At, uh, at, yeah. After yeah. Uh, uh, we got out, uh, we had ice on the ship, and uh, as uh, uh, we traveled, we got warmer and warmer climate. And uh, uh, we had uh, uh, summer clothes to mislead anybody that saw us going on the ship. They would think that we're going to the uh, uh, to the islands instead of going to the ETO. But uh, we got there. So you, you're, when you're in this 54 ship, ship convoy, convoy, you don't make any stops along the way once you leave New York. No, no, you left, no, you left New York, just, probably? Was it from New York you yes, sailed? Yes, it was yeah. from New York, yeah. And then you come around up, and then you, is La Havre the first place you, you land then? Uh, well, we landed, well, that's right, that was the first place we landed and got off the ship. And the, now when you say this is a, Armored division, and you're in the artillery. Yeah. W w the artillery in the in the. Ah, that's why. We, was that in the we ship were too? On the general ships, and we had like 500 soldiers on her, and the rest was tanks and ammunition. Uh, we had everything uh, we needed. With you. So when you say a general ship, does that what what does that? Uh, it, it implied a certain class. Uh, you know, they had the general's name, but that class of ships Just were identified by that by yeah. size yeah. and uh, general. Yeah. So you, did you find yourselves going a little stir crazy on the ship? No, I oh. I enjoyed the, the 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 ride on the ship, and it was surprising because it didn't bother me at all. No, no seasickness. No seasickness, and we had seasickness. And we had, uh, you stand and eat. You don't sit, you stand. And if the ship rolled one way or another, everything on the table was on the move. 
so you had to hold it with one hand and eat with the other. <laughs> and in a washroom, the uh, there was a foot riser before you could get into the washroom facilities, and there was water swooshing back and forth. You know, it, it got, the sea was so rough that the water out of the toilets came out. Wow. You know. Yeah. So nobody, nobody had any uh, any liquor or booze on the ship. No, no, no. <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, no, no, there wasn't. But we had plenty of it when we got back to uh, combat. Yeah. So when you land in in La Havre, then in whatever it is, January or '45 uh, or yeah, it was uh, uh, winter because we were. Uh, uh, we tore down one uh, wooden shack and uh, used it for firewood to heat up our place. And the French objected to that, and they came over and they wrote, wrote us up of what we owed the government for tearing down that house. <laughs> so when you land at uh, La Havre, then how long is it before you're on the road? Oh, rolling? we're on the road the next day. Wow. Oh, the, the, there was nothing, uh, no, no idle time, no, 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 there was no idle time. We were on the move. Yeah, it looks like you go to Totes or, and then Beauvais and Soissons. Yeah, Cezanne, Saint Dizier, Toul, Nancy. We were used in the Battle of the Bulge as reinforcements. That that was our first stop. And uh, unfortunately, truckloads of American soldiers were coming back, and they were coming back, uh, Malt. you know, yeah. bloody, bandaged up, and, you know, it wasn't a pleasant sight. But it put you in a m mad mood. Yeah. Uh, then eventually, I suppose you heard about that, the massacre at Malmati and the American soldiers being... Yes, you, yeah. you, you, get, you get information you heard that. You know, yeah. about things happening. And, you know, in some of the foxholes, you know, you think that the guys would have some, you know, naughty pictures or something like that. No, nah, they had rosaries, prayer books, and there was a lot of praying going on over there. Yeah. And, of course, there was a lot of, you know, killed. Yeah. And, uh... So you did you find did you find that your your training was effective? You oh yeah. you a good well there, yeah. uh, it wasn't uh, quite the same because uh, uh, even on the ship they were telling us about the hand to hand combat. When we got closer in, they says forget it. You got a carbine, you use it. You shoot the guy before he shoots you, and you try to shoot as many guys as you can. That was the instructions you got. Yeah. So you're carrying the carbine, and then you're in this oh, field we're, artillery we're, division, yeah, right? Yeah, we have. Well, we had all kinds of firepower because every driver had a 45. Uh, I think it was even a 30 caliber 45. <laughs> uh, you had a magazine. That, you used, and of course you had uh, in the uh, turret, you had uh, a machine gun. I had a, a 50 caliber. I started with 30 caliber, but when I fired a 30 caliber machine gun, I went good, go deaf for a couple of weeks. So then I told the officers that, you know, put me on a 50, because the 50, you got ping on the 30, and you got bump, bump, bump on the 50. The 50 didn't bother me. The only thing is when you uh, had planes attacking the convoy, uh, the soldiers got off the tank or wherever they were, half tracks, jeeps, and go under the vehicle for protection, and you as a 50 caliber, you go and shoot the plane. You got air. You got air, yeah, air you're responsibility. Yeah. At, at so point. when you're firing, are you firing from a tank or a half track or from an armored jeep or or or, or any of those? Yeah. Could it be any of those? 
when you were firing your, your, your 50, 50. Yeah. That was from a tank or from a, a half track? Or half track, half -track. usually. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, you know, they carried us as uh, additional personnel for a while, and uh, you rotated. I think there was five positions uh, uh, in firing, uh, loading, uh, changing the bags, or, or, or changing the There were two positions uh, on, on a shell for uh, when a shell hits and goes deeper and then blows up. Or you have one that travels so far and then it blows up. Uh, fuse delay and, uh, and uh, I forget what the other one was called. It's either one or the other, and then the bags determine the distance. Because sometimes you just lob, you know, up and back down on when when the enemy is the closest. Yeah. Your um, your officers did they impress you? Were you impressed with the quality of your officers? And the, uh, are there? There are. All right. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's. You know, everybody wakes up when they get over there and. Uh, you know, they don't push unless it's necessary and then it's understood that, you know, we got to do it, we got to do it. Was there any um, general? We had a general that was killed, but that was because, I shouldn't say that, uh, we had Patton. Oh. He was in charge. Drive, drive, drive. Yeah. And... Uh, the thing is, the enemy always looks on the steel helmet, and if, if you got too many stars or you got uh, too many birds on on the shoulder, they are gunning for you. They don't want to kill a private, but they want to kill the officers. So the officers were, you know, targeted d deliberately, you know, and the, the general got it. He was killed. His name was, do you recall? No, I don't, but yeah. it's in the book. Oh, okay. Well, well it's all right if I'm... Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but, uh, so Patton was a driver. Is, oh, yeah. Did the men like him or not necessarily, or he, he did what he had to do, or... <laughs> you know, on the one hand, when you're winning, you like it. Yeah. When you're losing, oh, my heavens... <laughs> We can't have that. <laughs> yeah, you know. And so when uh, so you reinforce the American positions at the bulge, and then then you push forward. Oh yeah. 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 And then did you did you go into Germany then? Oh yes. Yeah. And did you oh, cross yeah. the Rhine? Oh yes. Do you remember crossing the Rhine or what that was like or? Uh, every time we crossed, where there were bridges. Under the bridges were uh, 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 shells or dynamite. The Germans wanted to blow the bridges before we got there. But if we got there soon enough, we got to use the bridge. And in many, not in many, in some instances, we had the American uh, uh, build a bridge for us so that it could so that the tanks could go over it without sinking. Does, does the pontoon bridge work for tanks? Yes. Oh, it did. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. They had that all figured out. So, when you get into Germany then, does it look like there's been a lot of devastation or bombing oh, or anything? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, you know, uh, some of the places uh, we shelled all night long. I think there's a few pictures of, her of uh, some of the streets. <laughs> I, I had one situation over there. In one of the towns, I, I was given seven prisoners to clean the streets of rubble. The rubble is bricks and mortar and stuff like that. And, of course, you know, I'm sitting in the, the, the turret with a machine gun. And we only, I only got seven guys out there working. You know, 
they, they all worked a nice pace. Uh, you can't pick on them. You know, they were treating people nice no matter who. After a while, people would come over by me and they says, can we work for you? If we, will you feed us if 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 we uh, help clean the streets? I ended up with 50 people cleaning the streets because they were going to get fed. <laughs> you, you didn't have to have a gun on them or anything, my heavens. Yeah. But, Honest people, women, kids, everybody come and help. Kids, and, you, and they did get their, take one brick and carry it. And they did get their meal afterwards. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Our kitchen come along and you know, a stew or something like that. That fed up. Oh yeah, we had no shortage of food. We had plenty of food and we had plenty of gasoline. And the one time we, they had to bring gasoline by plane because we're too far ahead. You're making great progress. Yes, because of the general wanting yeah. to go, go, go. Yeah. Uh, an armored division, basically, one goes down the center, one goes to the right flank, one goes to the left flank to protect the flanks, and you keep going. We didn't take prisoners, but we didn't shoot. We have them drop the guns, and we run them over with a tank, and if we couldn't, you know, sometimes the Germans would turn around and pick up the guns and use it against the infantry. You know, well, when you hear that, then the next thing you do is you grind up everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a lot of the Germans were sick and tired, and they didn't want the war to continue. Uh, we had a lot of friends that were working in German factories making ammunition, and they came out with duds. When they shot, boom, I get up in the morning and there are duds all around. Had they gone off, could have been a different story, you know. But uh, uh, it, it, it we, we had all kinds of help. And over here, the women did a wonderful job. It took a lot of ammunition, and it took a lot of materials, and we didn't have to worry about it. Think of a soldier that's uh, uh, a uh, infantryman, gets 150 rounds. I shot 150 rounds and the squeeze of the trigger. You know, I didn't have to worry about uh, who, how much, or anything else. I sat on cases of food or ammunition. You know, that, that was my seat. <laughs> I'd have to worry about it when the seat got low. Need more ammunition. Yeah. But otherwise. So that, so when you're in this, uh, these armored columns pushing forward. You think the biggest danger is the art the enemy artillery? Oh yes, oh yes, yes. That German 88, that just makes a horrible, horrible noise. I had, not I, but the whole outfit had one blow up. It was maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 feet ahead, and it was maybe 30 feet in the air, and it was just uh, 88 that blew up, and it was meant to blow up in the air. It, it was such a huge noise, horrible, horrible. And what it could do, we had kitchen come over, you know, kitchen, hot kitchen truck with uh, heaters and stuff like that and lots of food. Uh, the kitchen came over to give us food. And the guy went to the half track, and he leaned over to get his mess kit, and a shell blew up above him, and his skin and clothing was just torn to shreds. It was just shreds. Now, there was nothing left. You know, you, you see that? And rough. Yeah. You're saying there's only... Uh 
religious articles in the foxholes. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but when um, so when the when the Germans aren't uh, retreat after the the bulge, uh -huh. and then you you guys cross the Rhine, uh -huh. you're confident that the war is coming to an end. Oh yes, yes. When we when we well, it was about a hundred and forty of us. We took twenty thousand prisoners. Wow! You can, so you have to say that those prisoners were voluntary prisoners. They all surrendered, you know, and that's the reason why we went out there and told them, "Go that way," and you go that way. Drop your guns over yeah. there. So then, when you get into Germany, then you swing south. Yeah. And then you're going to wind up in Munich or some. We Are you ended up in Hitler's home. In Hitler's home. Yeah. It was the 13th Armored Division that captured the uh, Hitler's home. I mean that Burke, the lair, was it Burkus? Burkus? Uh, you want to? Yeah, why don't we? Uh, uh, on the right hand book. side uh, on the bottom there with the cradle. Oh, Braunau. Oh, we're Hitler in the cradle, yeah. <laughs> so by that time you were in Austria, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now, what happened over there, we took it, and the first uh, airborne, they had 6,000 men, and 5,000 were killed. So there was only 1,000. So we let them have the yeah. purchase garden, and we, we were coming home anyhow as we were coming home to go to Japan. And they had that all worked out. They passed us out. I have a $5 Japanese bill that I was supposed to use when I go to Japan. <laughs> That's how sure we were, that, you know, that we were going to go and uh, our outfit was going to land just north of Tokyo. But, uh, you know, it was all spelled out and we were home for uh, 30 days, and during that 30 days, the war was over. So yeah, the bombs are dropped in early August of 45. Yeah. Yeah. So, right, so after you, so when you, when, when your division comes down into Austria then, um, you don't stay there too long. Oh, no, no, no. You're not no. in occupation or anything. We, you're, you're we, gonna we stayed long enough to be able to justify a ribbon. In order to justify a ribbon, we had to stay there two weeks, and uh, uh, the two weeks, uh, what the heck was it? Uh, then we then, then, then we were entitled to uh, the German uh, occupation ribbon that we were. And it, I think it says here on your um, biographical data form that you received an overseas service good conduct. Yeah. Bar oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's, 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 uh, um, well, you, everybody almost got a good conduct. Yeah. It, 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 you know, how could I get a good conduct when I was a bad kid all the time? <laughs> well, you weren't. <laughs> so did you have any of those um, uh, USO or entertainers coming through or anything while you were Oh, yes, that? yes, yes. So we had the, the priest have a, a, a mass, a abbreviated mass of passed out communion uh, in a combat zone out in the field. And were there any um, famous movie stars or singers or anybody no, at that time? No, 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 no nobody famous. No, and then no USO or... Uh, 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 there was a USO sponsored entertainment, but that was uh, uh, kind of rough because, you know, all they do is stand on a, a, a truck. Yeah. You know, there, there's no stage, there's no nothing, you know, they stand alongside a truck you know, who can see the, the first half a dozen rows, then after that you just listen to the music. So when you come, when you return to the United States, yes, that's by ship? 
And where do, uh, where do you where do you yes. where do you depart from on what port do you leave from on the way back? You don't go back to La Havre, right? You probably some place in the no, Medi- no, some place no. in the Mediterranean or uh, huh. Marseille or Nice that, or some. That, that's a darn good question. <laughs> because uh, uh, we shed some of our equipment. We had to clean it up and give it to the Russians. And I, I couldn't see that. Yeah. That was stupid. Uh, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Who were. You probably wasn't as long a trip going back. No, no, quicker, no, it quick, wasn't. No, quicker here. crossing. No, yeah. no, because we didn't take the southern route or anything like that. Yeah. We just went straight ahead. As a matter of fact, we hit uh, a, a couple of bad storms when the wave hit the front of the ship, it rolled over, and it was maybe 30 feet high on the ship, and then splat, crashed in the middle of the boat, you know, it just collapsed, <laughs> and then run off to the sides. If you, you know, didn't pay attention, you know, you could hold on to the banister, and the water goes under or around you. Yeah. Not, not to worry about. And then when it was dangerous, they run a rope so that you hold on to the rope from one end to the other. Yeah. So, um, any of your, you must have made friends with people in the, in the, uh, with your fellow soldiers. I suppose some of them might have been with you even from basic training all the way, or not? Uh, no. No, all, everybody no, got changed around all, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, we were all scattered. Uh, uh, But you must have. Uh, so you're coming back in the ship, so you feel pretty good. We're oh yeah, you lit the Germans gambling and you know, gambling and yeah. no liquor though, right? No, 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 no. no liquor. But then, you, but it's funny though because you're coming back and then you're going to get a, a hero's welcome and a little break. But then you're you're shipping out again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then you're going to German to Japan, and you had the little book to study. You know where you're going. Come over here, and all, uh, I think there were some similarities in go I ne I love you. Uh, you know you go I and ne I love you. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a you useful phrase. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and yeah. So did you, did you send a letter letters home while you were overseas, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, you know, it took longer. Yeah. Uh, so everybody must have been glad to see you back on Iowa Street when. Oh you, yeah. You came in on the train to Chicago, then probably on the way back. Uh, Coming back from Europe. I really don't remember because there was a time limit, you know, because mm-hmm. we had thirty days and we didn't want to spend it just traveling. I, I know that maybe when we were going back the first time, we were all pretty much liquored up. Uh, I know there was some guy who was trying to jump out the window when we were going okay. through a tunnel. Yeah. So the you would have sailed then from the west coast, I suppose, if you were, or San Francisco for the Japanese invasion then. You're, That's probably where we were going to go. Yeah. You know. yeah. So it, I think it, it says here that so you were in the service from November 27, um, 1943, and then you're released on uh, April 22, 1946. So did you, so even after the war in Japan was over, yeah, you were still in uh, the army. Uh, yes, but I had enough points. Ah. And then it was a combination. Uh, I had enough points, and uh, I went. Where the hell did I go? Texas or I, I went to the 13th Armored, and then they sent me home again for 30 days because my health condition, the heart wasn't good. Uh, but that heart condition never showed up on your examination when you were going in. in. No. Oh, no, it never show, it showed up then, but coming coming back, it showed up. 
Probably when that air airburst scared them or oh, whatever. Oh, you know, there's a lot of times when you were scared uh, when you were in a foxhole and you got your raincoat on the bottom, and when a shell bursts, the vibration causes either the shell's fragments or dirt rolling in. So you don't know whether it's shell or fragments. You know, fragments go with po power and they go into your yeah. skin. Mr. Warshall, did you mention that your your back was affected by yeah. serving, sitting in those armored vehicles? Yeah. Uh, I blamed it on you know, the thing is, the guys are goofing around. You know, they're all young men, and you, you're in a tank or you're a half track, and you hit a bump. Oh, whoopee! You know, I'm going to hit that really hard. You step on the gas, and you go, and then you really whack it. But you, everybody on the, on the half track, you know, you're traveling six, seven guys in a half track, <laughs> you're all getting this punishment, this pounding from the, the tank, same thing, you know. Uh, that's not good. But, you know, it's just like a football player. He knows, but of course he's getting paid big bucks. Yeah. I forget what we were getting paid. <laughs> yeah. So when you, um, so they send you, your heart acts up a little bit in the, they send you back to Chicago for a certain amount of time. Yeah. But they would still have sent you to... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're still, you know, they're goofy that way. Yeah. But um, you must have been feeling a whole lot better when the Japanese surrendered. Oh, my heavens, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. because they, they were uh, mean, nasty, and, uh, um, you know... The Germans were at times mean and nasty. Uh, I come across five or six, I can't remember whether it was five or six Americans in sleeping bags and they were shot up. You know, the sergeant and I, I was going up to the sleeping bag to look and see if they're living, you know, still alive or whether they're dead. But by then, you know, <coughs> Other vehicles pulled up, uh, the uh, uh, medics came over, so the sergeant says, leave it to the medics, and, you know, we better go. Uh, we're sergeant, you don't argue <laughs> when you're private. <laughs> and everybody knew me, <laughs> you know. Well, first of all, when I was in the half track, I'd go to homes, I'd go downstairs, pick liquor. Liquor, wine, the bottles that give the officers whiskey. Uh, wine, you know, we share with the whole 125 guys drinking wine out of, of one time we had two five gallon cans of wine and no water. Of course, you know, Bernie's fault. Bernie did it. He dumped it. <laughs> But when when the wine was there and they wanted it, oh, you know, then yeah. it changed. Was this in France or in Germany or in the both both places? places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So do you still enjoy wine today? Yes. Oh, oh. I do. I drink wine every day. Yeah. I drink uh, six ounces, uh, red wine, and I think that's helping me stay alive. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's red wine. This is is good for your heart. Yeah. Well, I got a bad heart. <laughs> So when um, so when you were discharged then in in, in Chicago, or uh, yeah, uh, I was separated in Chicago. Separated in Chicago. Yeah. And did you have any difficulty getting your old job back, or did you want no, your old job back? No, no, no. I I didn't have no trouble at all. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, they sent me. They acquired a, air, uh, a a building from the arm from the Air Force, uh, and they converted it to a machine shop, and they were manufacturing automobile pistons, 
and I was one of the guys that was in on the ground floor when they were talking about going into production on automobile pistons. Uh, I told them that it would be advantageous to have a straight line production. And uh, we had a double row of conveyors behind the operator, the operator and the machine. The first machine was a Sunstrand automatic lathe. And you pick up four pistons upside down. When they opened up the carton, they opened it so that the pistons were upside down. You reach in, you pick up four, put it on the table of the, of the lathe. And then you take one and put it on the tailstock, and then by air you move it into the chuck. Then you lock the chuck, withdraw that, and pull the lever, and the machine did the work. You could have had a woman do it, you know. Uh, that was the first position. I could go down the line and tell you each and every position. Wow. Because I set up the line. And, and this company was? Triplex Corporation. Triplex. And they, uh, this Mr. Lamb, uh, uh, what the hell did he do? He checked up on me. <laughs> and he's, then he came back down and he says, okay, you got your straight line. And I, at that time, I was going to Industrial Engineering College on Washington Boulevard, full-time day school. And... Uh, uh, was there a GI Bill then for that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the GI Bill paid for it, but they had to pay, I'm going to say double or triple uh, the rate because that's what they wanted. You know, they, they felt that they were a qualified school and this, that. And it cost them money to operate. <laughs> you know, th th they were taking advantage of the veterans. But uh, the classes were 15 only to a class, and the, the teachers were uh, not only uh, educated, but they had a factory experience. They knew what they were talking about. It, it was very important. Very, very you know. It was like a two-year course, or uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. So you stayed with uh, Triplex for a number of years. I stayed with them for a while, but uh, when they sent me to Colorado, it was Pueblo, 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 14 miles out of town. And we got over there, and uh, Madadi and I, and uh, I talked to some of the guys that I knew from before, and the guy says, you know, I'm going back because my wife can't take this hot air bloody noses and stuff like that, and, you know. So that kind of turned me off a little. But, uh, you know, uh, what was it that really sent me off? I forget. But, uh, but you decided not to, not to work? Not in, to go over there yeah. and stay there. It was, you could live into, in one of those barracks and remodel the barracks, you know, to, to live in, and the company would collect rent on that. Oh, a company town, yeah. Yeah, company yeah. town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it, it, oh, we had the mother-in-law, she was in the 90s. Um, so are you and Dottie married it in, in, in? Oh yeah, we were married for 60 years. No, we weren't married then. No. No, we no. were married after. After. Did you know Daddy when you were overseas? No. Not yet. No. Okay. No. Married when you came back. Yeah. 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 When I came back, I crashed her brother's wedding. Were you in uniform? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes when the guys come back, yeah. they get oh, yeah, uniform yeah. on. Oh, you know. They get better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, no, you. No, no. I, I did my share of that too. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you know, you always talk to the person and get invited. Otherwise, yeah. you don't yeah. crash us. No. Yeah. Yeah. The word crash it sounds yeah. rude. Yeah. No. So you eventually you left Triplex then and yeah. stayed in, yeah. in industrial manufacturing. Is, yeah. yeah. Did, um, 
Oh, I went become an industrial engineer, and uh, uh, and then when you what year did you move to Niles? You, you must in the fifties yeah. then probably. No, yeah, we moved to Niles. Oh, well, I don't know about twenty-seven years ago or something like that. Big, I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, did you stay in contact with your buddies after the service or anything? No. 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 no they were really uh, from all different uh, states. Uh, I, I really don't. You know, you think while you're in the service that you know, hey, this is. We're bond. We're bonded for life. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you know, it's some of those were close scrapes and. But uh, uh, I guess we all had our problems. Yeah. So did, then did you join any of the veterans organizations? Or? Uh, I uh, joined the American, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, what's, oh, I'm trying to think of it. Not the VFW. Or, but yes, you know, I did, yeah. uh, in Park Ridge. Yeah. And I, I spent a lot of time there uh, with my son. Uh, my son died. He was 42. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'd go over there and putt and play and drink beer. And, but, uh, so were there ever any reunions that you were invited to or anything? No. Or no? Uh, now, you mentioned that... Um, you thought you wound up in the infantry, in the in artillery, as opposed to the infantry, because of the high IQ. Because the high IQ. Everybody that was in that group, yeah, uh, was uh, considered, you know, with a high IQ. Yeah. Uh, let's say we all answered the questions on the test like we were supposed to. Yeah. And that was due to my twenty-five cent investment <laughs> of the yeah. pamphlet. Yeah. You probably had some good teachers at Crane, though, I bet. Yes, yeah. I did. I yeah. had. And I had Mrs. Linder for division teacher. And that woman take a personal interest. You know, she wants to teach you manners and how to eat at the table. During our, our, our period time, you know, she always prepared something. She always was trying to educate us to do something. Yeah. In addition to the, you know, regular mumbo jumbo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, uh, I know I, had, I don't know whether it was trig or, or math or one form or another. Uh, I just couldn't understand it, and it, I, I just couldn't. The teacher got a hold of me and sat me down, and we went over it. I said, is that all there is to it? And that was it. The, the light went on, or the, the light went on. Yeah, and that's I, all it takes sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was really surprising, and, and I had Birkbeck, Birkbeck, yeah, for a wood shop, and I had machine shop, and of course, you know, the the teachers were uh, encouraging you to take extra subjects, you know, after school, come in and you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll show you or I'll teach you, you know, always. I, I, I don't know, that was a damn good school. Yeah. We had three black people in, in our division. Good, hard-working kids, you know, just as good as any one of us. Yeah. Uh, but then after that, you know, the, the school's getting a bad reputation. Yeah. I think one of the veterans who comes to our breakfast every year is a Crane Tech graduate, Max Kolpis. He went to uh, he went to Crane. Uh -huh. I think he was on the. Um, did they have like an ROTC team or a, or, or a yes, they had rifle an team ROTC, or something? He yes, was on that. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. I was in on that, and then I was in on the. Uh, my son took up uh, 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 this ROTC and. Uh, I, Take them to the, him and a few of the other fellas to the uh, firing range and practice. Did your son go into the service? No. No. Was there anybody 
else in your family that was in the service? Uh, my brother, he was uh, in Germany, and he was uh, troops of occupation. He was younger than you were? Yes. He was in the army. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was in the army. Um, now we always we're coming to the end of the interview, uh -huh. and we, there's a couple of questions we always ask all the all the veterans. Um, uh, Mr. Warshaw, how do you think your military service and your experiences in the army <coughs> affected your life? I know, I suppose that's a big question. I always wanted my own business. So that kind of turned me off. <coughs> I ended up trying a couple of businesses. I failed in a couple of them. Uh, it, there wasn't that much to be gained by it. The one business that I uh, was more successful in, that was a big heavy machine uh, operation. When I say heavy, one of the milling machines were, oh, I don't know, 20 feet long. We made track for a flame cutting machine. That's a machine that runs on a track and it has more than one cutting edge. It has a torch. It might have three torches and it slits the, the iron. Uh, it makes parts for stairs, for oil tanks. It was uh, pretty good for a while. But the other companies were too much competition. Wait, I gotta stand up for a second. Sure. Well, the hip pocket is impossible to, to get, get into. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's difficult to say what you would be doing. Uh, I would have been a plant manager, probably. Without the war. Without the war. Yeah. Uh, you know, while uh, I started it for American Spring and Wire, and I got six, 60 cents an hour. Then I went to Triplex in the afternoon at 5 o'clock and I got the Stonewall Jackson talking and got a job over there for 125 a week. And then I think I had 35 people, good, hard-working people, honest people. You know, if a woman ran a, a reject, she cried. She feel sorry. You know, this is war. Everything that we worked on was yeah. for war. You know, so it was affecting, you know, more than just her and I, but uh, a lot of the people were just very nice. You know, I had my routine go talk to each and every person. I'd come in a half hour early, so I would talk to everybody from the previous shift to see who had trouble. Between other shifts, you know, they always had three shifts going. <clears throat> Uh, between shifts, they would argue. You know, this one left over scrap uh, rejects and this and that. Between my shift and, and, and the other shifts, oh, no problems. People were honest. You know, this the 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 drill broke, crack broke. She didn't drill six holes. She was drilling five. And she did it for 15 minutes. Didn't catch it right away. So we had a, you know, another, 
It sounds like you were talented as a, a man, as a manager of people as well as equipment. Yes. I think you were you know, human touch. People were good. Yeah. People were good, honest, and hardworking. Everybody put in. Yeah. I think a hundred and ten percent, and I always treated them like that, you know. And I think this uh, personal relationship. You had a kid that's uh, sick at home. Next day, I made sure that I. Hey, how's your kid doing? Better? Oh, give him a couple more days, he'll be all right. You know, a yeah. lot, lot of good comes from that. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Warshaw, um, do you think your military experience um, has influenced your thinking about war or about the military in oh, general? Oh, yeah. War. <laughs> Let me get that for you. Oh, that's all right. Oh, hearing you fell out. <laughs> I shook my head. <laughs> uh, you know, the women and the kids, people suffer something awful. And what the hell for? Just, you know, not, not, what, we have never gained anything. We're not out to gain. But, you know, the people that we help, what the hell, they become our enemy. I wouldn't trust Russia for, for nothing. I'm sorry if, if you're Russian, there's dissent or anything else. It's those people over there. Putin or whatever his name is. He's the most dishonest man on two feet. And what the hell does he want? What do these people want? Two million, five million, ten million... What for? You can only eat so much, you can only drink so much, and really, it's the nice people that li live and enjoy life. You know, I spent a, about eight months with the psychiatrist. I had a problem. Uh, you know, those five or six guys that were in the sleeping bags, uh, that bothered me a lot. And well, there were other incidents. Uh, all right, so I go to the psychiatrist, and she says, you know, the Germans weren't that bad. If you were there with five or six Germans in sleeping bags, would you shoot them first? Or, or would you wake them up and, and have a chance? You know, we all knew that. I always carried a pistol with me in a sleeping bag. So, you know, uh, you, you would automatically shoot. And, you know, it's difficult to travel at night because your best friend might shoot you. And uh, uh, after the psychiatrist explained it to me and we talked about it. Uh, we talked about a couple of other incidents. Oh, was that one or another one? Uh, the guys were in a foxhole, two Germans, and they had an anti-tank gun. And we went over them, and we stopped. And we ground them into the ground, killed them, moaning, yelling, screaming. But if we had gone further ahead, they would have shot at our back, which is the weakest part of the tank, and we would have been dead. You know, if you stop and analyze it, so, so some of the men that I seen, they were ragged, cold, miserable. They wanted to quit a long time ago. Hitler was a nut, and the, it's it's really surprising how many people were friendly. Now, I don't know if you're French. I don't, I don't care. A lot of people they're wonderful. A lot of the different languages they're all wonderful, but they got their bad ones too. Uh, 
what was I going to tell you about the bad ones? Okay, the French. Because the Germans, you know, you leave your shoes out there, they grab it, they polish it. You thank them, you try to, you know, bring something from the kitchen or extra bread or something like that. Um, people were nice. People would, you know, find beer somewhere and bring the beer for us. Uh, not because we were gaining materially, but, but they were very friendly. Very friendly, very nice people. I was invited to many suppers when there was uh, no fraternization. And I, <laughs> I, I, was that in France and in Germany? In Germany. In Germany. In France, it wasn't quite like that. I, I mentioned that uh, we tore down a building. Yes. The damn building must have been, I don't know how old. It had dirt on the roof. That was the roof, dirt. And we tore it down because we were cold. It was miserably cold. And uh, they come over and they charged us for it. Uh, we took water from a well. The farmer complained that we ran his well out of water. We brought it down too low, he couldn't reach it. We had to come and bring water and put it in his well, French well. You know, we, we never had any problem in Germany like that. Well, of course, you know, the situation was a little different, but you know, the people were, were nice, were friendly, were sympathetic, and, and didn't say, oh, we're, you know, conquerors. No, they, they were nice, nice, easy-going people. So it sounds like you preferred the, the, Germans? the Germans to the French, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, let's say maybe the French you know, got into a habit uh, of, you know, if, if you don't pay me in advance, I'm not going to do it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to charge you anyhow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was always, they had to have it first. But they may have suffered a lot, too. Oh, yeah. You know, a lot, a lot of the French that were, nah, I'm going to say that, that, that they were good because I benefit. Maybe I'm living here because the French, there were... Underground movements, oh, the resistance, yeah. and they suffered, and they were on our side. <clears throat> uh, they helped, you know, too, with, with the war. Oh, well. Well, Mr. Warshaw, is there anything you'd like to add to the interview that we haven't covered? I think you did a good job. I think you did a very good job. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. I'm relaxed and I'm saying, I'm, you got me talking. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. You got me talking. So I'm going to turn this recorder off, and if we think of anything, we can turn it back on. Okay. And I guess the, the mother or the father must have said, well, you know, why don't you go and shake his hand? she come over. I shook her hand, and I thanked her. And she took her hand, and she went by her mother, and she says, he shook my hand. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, her mother and her father then, you know, realized that, you know, what transpired, and, you know, the excitement that the little girl yeah. created. Great girl. <laughs> Those, um, when you were at that um, triplex plant yeah. before the war, you were making Navy... Well, shells? They, 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 they were making, uh, it was Navy cocking a lever for a gun, a naval gun. Uh, it had a shaft, it had a, a cam. Uh, yeah. Was, I just wanted to, I, I, yeah, I just wanted to get picture that, of that clear. Because uh, this profiler all it is, is 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 a cutter, which is operated by a motor, and a follower. The follower actually follows a pattern, but you 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 hold the table with both hands. All the other machines 
you have a fixture, you put the piece in a fixture, you lock it, and, it, and you move the table, and the table moves in and, you know, performs the operation. But uh, the profiler, uh, it makes more complex parts. And it's usually a casting. If you put a casting in there, and it has different shapes. And the idea was, you know, some of them hold the, the wheel over here. No good. you got to hold the wheel so that your elbow is holding the... the that you, you couldn't move this, you know, away from me I, because I had the leverage, you know, and, and then once you start on the piece, you just go with it, you know, you, you follow it. And it was, uh, first of all, the, the, the choice of people that they had, very poor, you know, bakers, this, that, never saw a machine before. That you know never operated a machine and a profiler, the other machine where you put a piece in, you know once you've shown how to do it, and anybody could do it, you know. And we had a lot of good women working in the shops. Yeah. Could the women do the profiler also? Mm, a little bit of strength no, there. No, I yeah. don't think so. The, the arms. Yeah. Yeah. We we never tried a woman. The, a, a husky woman, you know. Uh, I would say would be able to do it, and women, they're willing. They're willing to work. They're willing to work hard. Yeah. yeah. We won the war because of everybody's good effort. Everybody. I women. Think, I think that's a great line to end the interview. <laughs> uh, get released from the draft board. You're on a plane and you got a job. I go to the draft board. We had a meeting on Thursday. They, I sat down and there was about uh, three, six, seven, about seven guys. They look over my papers and pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. And this guy says, "You're going overseas, but you're going in the army." You know, the question is, is that the best place to use me? Or was it on those uh, uh, torpedo shafts that I made 32 hours? And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure that everyone was accepted. Because you, you, you're right there. You check it. If it's, they were good. So they ended up in torpedoes. And they ended up, you know, the Navy had it. But, you know, I always say you use the person where, you know, it's uh, most advantageous to you, for you, for the government. Yeah. You know. So do you think it was just the one person on the draft board that, that made the no, decision? No, no, they all, they all they decided. All, they all, they, I don't know what they decided, but yeah. they passed it on like nobody uh, felt that I, ha I could have such qualifications but, but uh, it was just that I was there at the time when they needed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if you went down the line and, and you asked the guy what his background is, he said, uh, I was a baker. I yeah. got a little... Uh, 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 he was complaining about the, uh, the flour that he had on his lungs. Yeah, from, from baking. But uh, I've I've heard some of the vets um, like where were the sometimes the army puts them where the, you would think they where they should be in another place. The army puts them in the opposite yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, I just you should put a cook where he enjoys cooking. Yeah, you know where he would you know bake a pie for the guys. You know when the guys would appreciate it. You, you want to keep the guys in a good mood. Guy's gonna go and get his head blown off, or arm, or, or leg, or you know, you see some of those, and, and you know, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. You know, they, they deserve a real pat on the back. You know, it's, it's those guys that you know yeah. are the heroes. Thank you, Mr. Warshaw. Thank you. Three hundred per day. 
I set it up with uh, a multiple uh, position uh, presses. And we made 300 an hour. The M48 fuse. Yes. And that was for? Bombs. The bombs. Yeah. Brass casting, brass housing from a screw machine product. But, uh, you know, uh, we, we could do anything that we want to do. Uh, this one guy, Gordon Shikorny, he hired me. He became the president of uh, Triplex, no, of uh, uh, I'll think of it. Skill? <laughs> Not skill. No. no. Uh, at any at any rate, I told him, let's get a roll of butcher paper. And we got the uh, uh, slide projector from the uh, uh, the tool makers. Uh, the only difference between that and the finished product was either uh, riveted holes or screws. They put in screws. We take out the screws and put it, put in rivets. But you got the unit. I don't know. It was forty thousand dollars. We take it apart. You take the cover off. The cover had two or three baffles with mirrors uh, and uh, magnifying glasses. And you kick it back. You got the bulb over here. You got a fan motor. Uh, and as you disassemble it, we take the individual parts, make it a sub-assembly, and then that would be fed into the line with the girl putting the, the housing on there putting the motor in, and you just sit and you disassemble, you reassemble it, and you determine how much, how long it should take. Uh, we had movies, we had dealing cards, 52 cards or whatever it is, uh, you know, to, to get yourself into a mood of knowing how fast is fast or how fast should be normal for a person to... So you use this film and these playing cards for training. Yes, for yeah. training purposes, yeah. yes. And to get in, in, in the mood of it, the yeah. speed of it, the speed. Now was that during was that during the war or, a, or after the war? That was when you were with before Mr. The Gordon, war. before the war. Before the yeah. war. Yeah. And then after the war also. Yeah. Well, you know, I really agree with you. I think you're too valuable. They should have... It's interesting, the Army's choice, or the yeah, yeah. draft board, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are gifted in a certain way. You know, uh, one thing that shut me up is putting me on a stage with, with, with a group of people, or take me out of my environment. I used to be able to conduct a... a, a not a seminar, but uh, an instruction period of, of how to do things. Uh, in this room, which was my room, I had my things here laid out. I could talk. I could reach. I could I, I could do everything. The guys take me out of there and put me on a, on a stage in, in, in an auditorium. <laughs> I'm lost. Yeah. I can't speak. Takes an, adjust, an adjustment for sure, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, that's not me. I'm, uh, I'm more my hands. My hands. Are... Yeah. We had a, a little shell that we were making, and uh, uh, that shell, a blade of grass, would explode it. Sensitive. Very sensitive. Oh. Very, very sensitive. And uh, we were making it. Uh, the problem was because it was so sensitive that uh, the manufacture around it, very difficult. Dangerous, yeah. Yeah, dangerous. 
blow up. <laughs> but you never put the heavy powder in there. You, you just put it, you know, so you know that it functions. But uh, and and the fact that I could remember. And and I don't leave any detail undone. You know, uh, if if you didn't tell the guy in the shipping room to take that carton and turn it over so he could cut the bottom off so that the operator could reach in and reach grab four at a time, you'd have them taken one at a time, or you would send it send a carton on a, on a conveyor. To the operator and that wrong person. Four at a time. Four at a time. Get that top off, yeah. You know. Yeah. Both hands always working. Always, you know, two at a time. You get a rhythm. Yeah. Uh, time and motion is study yeah. in there too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, you know we proved it uh, by. Uh, Movies and uh, well, we had the fuses. <laughs> a girl picks up a part, puts it in, and the machine indexes. Picks it up, puts it in. That's it. You g- twenty a minute. A minute is a long time. You could do a lot of things, but uh, I thought. I, I, thank you for the, <laughs> the insight into industrial production of uh, munitions. You know, uh, oh, yeah. you're the only. I haven't uh, spoken with any veteran about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it took a lot of ammunition. Yeah. You know, my heavens. Were you impressed with the German equipment? Yes. Yeah. They had a. <laughs> I, uh, I. It wasn't I. It was we. And uh, the Germans ran out of the foxhole, left the machine gun, and took off. The other guys were chasing the Germans. I took the machine gun, tried to take as much ammunition and everything. And one time, I was, you know. I uh, was supposed to go up front as a forward observer. You go with an officer and you go two, three guys. At any any (coughs) rate, uh, it's a driver of the Jeep, corporal. You know, uh, here I am, a private again. Sometimes I had trouble, sometimes I didn't. I had uh, two half-tracks with 14 men in there, and they were all at rank, and I didn't, and I was in charge of the half-tracks. But, you know, that's the way it goes. <laughs> uh, at any rate, what was I going to tell you? Oh. Uh, Is it the German machine gun bullets? Oh, yeah, the German machine guns. Well, I took the bullets with it. But uh, the thing is, and I tried it out, and I knew how to operate it, and, and you know, it was good. And I was going to go out to, as a forward observer, and I put the machine gun in the, in the three-quarter ton truck. And the guy, the driver says, you're not taking that with you. We're not there to attract fire. We're there to communicate. One thing led to another, and I, I don't know whether I said it, but it was, the word was that one of us wasn't going to come back. <laughs> Strong words. <laughs> the officer, this captain, I, well, I knew him, you know, just like you, you know. And uh, he says, well, Bernie, what are you trying to do? I says, nothing. I says, I got a machine gun? I go out there and shoot the Germans with the German machine gun. He says, well, you know, the corporal has a uh, beef. He says that your shooting with a German gun is a distinction between ours and theirs that we would attract our fire 
and and the German fire. <laughs> so it, it ended up none of us went. <laughs> but then I, I I went along with the idea that not the best idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, just, we destroyed the machine gun. Yeah. Because some of the vets say you could you could tell the kind of the shell oh, yeah. you could hear from the noise yeah. the sound what, yeah. what it, it is it, it, it tear yeah you could tear it you tear a cloth and you know brrr. no no bing 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 <laughs> that's a big difference yeah you know yeah so uh, I was in the wrong but uh, <laughs> seemed like a good idea at the time yeah you know yeah. what the hell. You know, it's a world of difference between using a machine gun and shooting, you know, a couple of rounds at a time. And you were trained on using a machine gun. Oh, yeah. 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 I was trained on the Americans 30 and the 50. And, uh, were those brown? No, not. Browning? Browning? Automatic like rifle or something? Yeah. Uh, BAR. Our car being uh, then became a 15 round clip. With uh, automatic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, ejection, so you pull the trigger and fire 15 rounds. But that 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 that's it, you know. If you don't see the enemy hiding behind the wall, whether he's on this side or on that side, you know, you don't you you can wait until he puts his head in, or you just shoot where the wall is. You know, hoping to get them behind the wall. So if you have extra shots, you know, you just spray letter L. The letter L. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Warshaw. <laughs> Thank you very much. Home on a furlough. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's, instead of going home on a furlough, he came to the United States. And his brother that was here joined the American Army right away. And he ended up being a sergeant. And what year would that have been when your, your dad came? World War I. World War I. Yeah. 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 So the, the war, world wars of the 20th century certainly affected your family. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's you know it's difficult to say whether it's favorable or unfavorable. Uh, you know what could have happened if uh, yeah if there was or if there wasn't yeah. And that area of Poland was constantly back constantly and forth. Back yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. That's the reason why the people that you leave Europe is because uh, you know. Even the best systems last 25 years, and right away somebody's, you know, coming in, creating a war. Yeah. What the hell for? The same ground is still there. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. another good line.